Greetings, my name is Yubel Kis Montalvo, I'm the Heads Executive Director, and today I have the honor and privilege to be with Dr. Carlos Vargas, President of South East Missouri State University, and also the Heads Chairman of the Board of Directors. And today we want to talk a little bit about the relationship of your institution with Heads. But first of all, Dr. Vargas, how are you today? I am very well, thank you very much, Yubel Kis. Thank you. Our first, first question is to learn more about your institution. How long does Eastern Southeast Missouri State University has been established and how many students do you serve? Well, the university was established in 1873 uh, and we have about currently about 10,500 students. Wow, that's a lot of students. And talking about uh, students, how many programs do you offer as an institution and in what modalities do you offer those? Very good. Well, uh, specifically in a, in a quantitative way, we have about 89 different majors uh, that we offer. And they are uh, spread around five colleges, the College of Business and Computing, the College of Education, Health, and Human Studies, the College of Arts and Media, the College of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, and the College of Social Sciences and Humanities. So you can see that the range of programs we have is very broad. Uh, we're really a comprehensive institution. Uh, we have many programs, of course, most of them at the undergraduate level, but we have many programs uh, at the master's level. In, Excuse me, we uh, continue to develop innovative programs uh, to reflect the, um, the changing uh, interests of the students and the business and industry sectors. And talking about modalities, do you offer face-to-face -face and combination with online, hybrid? How, what, which modalities do you offer? Yeah, we, we, the, the standard modalities we have is the face-to-face and also the uh, online uh, programs. We have a very robust uh, uh, program uh, uh, portfolio in, in online programs. We have uh, of the order of 30 or so different programs, not courses, but programs that we offer totally online. So we're very strong in that area, uh, but we have the face-to-face, -face, uh, uh, the standard uh, uh, courses uh, as face-to-face. -face. And also we are now developing what we call high flex uh, courses, which is courses where a student can go to the class if he or she wants to, or they can sit at home somewhere and take the, uh, uh, take the uh, uh, online uh, version of the course in the same semester. So it just really gives students the, po the possibility to take the class uh, by going to the classroom or by uh, going to a location where they can actually be uh, on online. So we're, uh, the, pandem the, the pandemic has actually just created the need for us to become more versatile and that's mm -hmm. what we want. Excellent, excellent initiative. And now talking more about the, uh, the relationship of your institution with HEADS. First of all, since when you are a HEADS member and what motivates your institution to join? Very good. Well, Southeast Missouri State University has been a member of HEAD since I came here as a president. That was in 2015. Uh, so ever since we've been a member of HEADS. But before that, I knew HEADS because I had been a, a member representing another institution when I was in Pennsylvania. So my personal uh, relationship with HEADS uh, comes from 2006. Uh, and uh, I'm, uh, it's, I'm very attached to HEADS. I think it's a wonderful organization uh, and, and uh, I'm excited to be part of it. Yes, and we're excited that you have been part of, of, of this year with us as well. And talking about the services that we offer, what services do you understand that Southeast Missouri State University has, has made the most of it? Uh, we have, uh, we definitely have uh, used the services that, are, uh, that HEADS has for students. Uh, the ability to take standardized testing is actually very, very good for our students uh, when they are thinking about maybe going to graduate school or so. Um, but the uh, access to the resource, other resources that the HEADS has in, the, uh, in its website has uh, been very uh, important for us too. 
Um, uh, two other uh, ways in which HEDS has contributed to, uh, to us is by uh, having these uh, meetings. We have two times a year that we meet um, in a different location. And uh, that kind of networking that we do when we do that is, is very important. Uh, because it also has allowed us to, uh, I personally have promoted HITS by taking um, individuals from the university to attend those meetings so that they become also knowledgeable about what HITS has to offer. And they had the opportunity to connect with other individuals that are uh, from other institutions who have the same role. For example, when we have invited the directors of uh, online education at our universities, it's a very rich conversation that takes place when the people that are in charge of online education at different institutions all come together and have an opportunity to discuss uh, the challenges and the opportunities that they have. Definitely, and these help us uh, continue developing more services to continue serving our members. And now, talking about the pandemic, what strategies have HEADS implemented to address this, uh, the impact of this pandemic, and how have HEADS services been useful to your institution, President Vargas? Well, it's been very uh, critical and, and very beneficial for us, the fact that HEADS relies heavily on technology. Because during the pandemic, what we have had to rely on is the use of technology, just like we are doing right now with, the, with this, uh, with this uh, interview. Uh, so uh, the, the ability to access resources through the website that HEADS has, uh, the continued interest and, and promotion of HEADS on uh, issues of retention and graduation for our students, uh, the opportunity to have conversations one-on-one -on -one by making a phone call uh, by, by, by trying to explore ways in which we can connect with uh, institutions uh, that are in different locations and knowing what they have done uh, to address some of the challenges with, uh, with the pandemic. Uh, all those are different elements that have played a role in the ability that we have had here at the university uh, to deal with the pandemic. So HEADS has been... Uh, a very important factor in, in our ability to deal with this uh, pandemic in a, in, a, in a successful way. Thank you. Thank you for these kindly comments. And two more questions to uh, resuming this interesting interview. First of all, how do you visualize the present and future of HEADS as a result of, the, of, of this uh, pandemic, Dr. Vargas? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I think what the what HES is going to become a very prominent organization. I, I truly I, I can predict that because uh, the the reliance that HES has on technology and the need that now universities are going to have to be able to use technology more effectively on a daily basis uh, makes the uh, the two uh, the, the university. Uh, and, and heads uh, into a, uh, a, a partnership that I think is going to be very uh, useful and very beneficial for universities. So in the future, I see uh, heads uh, benefiting from uh, the uh, developments that are taking place right now in universities uh, using technology. Uh, I think it's heads is at the epicenter. Of, of a revolution really that's going to be taking place uh, increasingly. So we're not gonna go back to the way we were teaching and learning before uh, the pandemic. So we, a lot of what we did during the pandemic is going to continue to be with us, with the universities. And I think HEADS is going to be a, a, a great catalyst to make sure that we can take full advantage of what we have done and then explore and identify even new and more um, uh, innovative models uh, using technology to enhance the learning of the students. Excellent, thank you so much. And one last question, Dr. Vargas. What would you say to those institutions that are considering joining HEADS? I, I would say go ahead and do it, <laughs> join HEADS. I, I hope that some of the comments that I've made here uh, make it clear for individuals who have listened to you and to us um, why it is important to, to, uh, to join HEADS. Uh, the networking opportunities that HEADS uh, uh, provides, the fact that the Hispanic population is growing 
uh, in number and in quality every day, uh, you know, throughout the world, but in particular in the United States, Mets, ma makes heads. It is a very uh, uh, important resource that uh, that we can take advantage of uh, networking, the the use of technology, the opportunity to to uh, to talk to other individuals and in other institutions that are actually using technology uh, to enhance the the learning and the uh, uh, teaching uh, at, in higher education is actually uh, extremely important. So, so I, th I hope that people understand and saw uh, what kind of, uh, of tool actually heads can be uh, to promote their success as an institution. So thank you. Thank you so much for your perspective from uh, the side of your institution. Also, we, wa we would like to thank you for your time. I know that in this pandemic crisis, the, your agenda has to be very hectic. So we truly appreciate your time for doing this interview with us. And we hope that that would be the first of uh, so many more. And we would love to continue this relationship with your institution. We are delighted to serve you. And thank you for your time again, President thank Biden. Thank you, Beatrice. Have a good day. Bye-bye. As well. Bye-bye.